Assalamu alaikum and good morning everybody So we will continue our lecture from, from the last time that we stopped Which is uh, this last slide Which I have uh, which we have discussed before the break In this slide I have shown you how the uh, steady state speed equations is derived from the schematic of the shunt motor connection the voltage equations of the armature is obtained by writing the KVL for this loop and then we have the uh, current equation which is obtained by writing the KCL at this node and we have also seen that the back and back voltage EA is given by this equation here where K is determined by the physical constructions of the machines phi is the flux per pole and omega is the speed of the motor the torque is given by these equations where k is uh, the same as the back mf voltage equation phi is the flux per pole and ia is the armature current using these three equations we can write down the equations for the speed which is shown here now from here we have completed example 4.6 and 4.7 today we are going to look a little bit more focus on this equation here this equation gives the steady state speed equations of a DC motor and from these equations we can see that the speed or the steady state speed can be controlled by three methods which is the voltage control through VT the armature resistance control through RA and the flux per pole control phi which is by controlling the field current IF for the armature resistance control we need to add an external resistor to the armature circuit in order to control the speed in some applications the speed need to be controlled however in some other applications we don't need to control the speed but we need to control the torque and the torque is controlled by controlling the armature current the uh, the motor and the mechanical load which is coupled to the shaft of the DC motor is characterized by its torque speed characteristics this is similar to how we characterize a device in an electric circuit by looking at its voltage current relationship for example a resistor is characterized by its own law V over I equals to R. The capacitor is characterized by the voltage current relationship where the current of a capacitor is given by C multiplied with the rate of change of the voltage across it. And the inductor is for example is characterized by the voltage current relationship where the voltage across an inductor is given by the L the inductance of the inductor multiply with the rate of change of the current through it now for the mechanical components or elements we characterize them through their torque speed characteristics before I continue with the slides let me first explain the relationship between the torque speed characteristics of the motor and the torque speed characteristics of the load so we are going to shift to the drawbot now. Let's consider an object with mass m moving in a translational motion with a velocity v as shown here. According to the Newton's second law of motion, the net force acting on this body, which is Fe minus Fl, is given by m, the mass of the body, times the rate of change of the velocity of the body or dv dt and this is well known as 
m times a, where a is the accelerations of the body. Under steady state condition in which the velocity of the body does not change with time, then based on the equations, fe equals to fl. In other words, to maintain a constant velocity, then the applied force fe must be equal to the load force fl, which is in the opposite direction. For the DC machines or DC motor that we consider in this course, the motion is rotating rather than translating. We can still apply the Newton's second law of motion for a rotational motion. However, instead of force, we use torque and instead of the mass m, we use j, which is the moment of inertia, and instead of a translational velocity v, we use the angular velocity omega. So, we can write down Te, which is the electrical torque produced by the motor, minus the load torque. In other words, the net torque must be equal to j, which is the combined moment of inertia of the system, times the rate of change of the angular velocity. Again, under steady state conditions, in which the angular velocity does not change with time, and d omega dt equals to zero. Therefore, te must be equal to tl. In other words, in order to maintain a constant angular velocity, the applied electrical torque or the motor torque must be equal to the load torque tl. So, what does this mean? We know that the speed can be written as a function of torque as we have derived previously, which means that we can actually visualize this speed versus torque characteristics of the motor by using the speed versus the torque graph. The red line here represents the torque speed characteristics of the motor, which is given by this equation. Let us assume that we know the speed versus torque characteristics of the load and is given by the green curve as shown here. Therefore, the steady state operating point is where the motor and the load characteristics intersect. From the graph, therefore, we can obtain the steady state speed of the motor, which is shown as omega SS. Now, let us return back to the slides. Now we know that steady state speed is where the torque speed characteristics of the motor intersects with the torque speed characteristics of the load. Based on these equations, there are three methods in which we can control or change the characteristics of the motor. By changing the fuel flux, by changing the armature voltage, Vt, and by changing the armature resistance, Ra. Let's look at first on how to change the characteristics of the motor by changing the terminal voltage Vt. If we draw the characteristics of the motor on a speed versus torque graph as shown here, and then we draw the torque speed characteristics of the load, which is shown by the rate curve here, then we know that the section point between the two characteristics will give the steady state speed of the motor. The intersection point between the motor speed and the speed axis is determined by Vt over K5. By varying Vt, therefore, we will change these intersection points. Therefore, as we change Vt, the steady state speed will change. This method, however, requires that we have variable DC supply. The second method to change the characteristics of the motor is to vary Ra. From the equation shown here, we know that by varying Ra, then we will change the slope of the speed torque, the intersection point between the motor characteristics and the speed axis would not change. Therefore, as we vary Ra, then we will get a different operating point of speed as shown here. As you can see here that the speed range is limited by varying Ra. And furthermore, by inserting external resistance to the armature circuit, then we are basically increasing the power losses due to the I square R. This method gives a very simple speed control. 
However, the losses is high due to the external resistor that we have to add to the armature circuit. The last method is to vary the flux. As we vary the flux, you can see from the equations that we will change both terms of the speed top characteristics. We will change the intersection point as well as we will change the slopes. Therefore, as we reduce the flux, then the negative slope will increase and the intersection point will increase as well. However, we should remember that as we reduce the flux in order to change the characteristics, we are actually reducing the torque capability of the machine because the torque of the motor is given by T equals K phi I A. It is also not possible for us to control using this technique if the flux is coming from the permanent magnet. In other words, if the motor is a permanent magnet motor,